a great hero approaches, the Hound of Ulster, fearsome Cuchulain on his chariot, engulfed in his infamous Warp Spasm. Cuchulain may well be one of the best known characters from old Irish literature, and the Warp Spasm he goes into when he goes mad during battle has been something I've wanted to recreate since I translated one of these passages in university. So, the Warp Spasm is described several times in the Tawny Bocunia, um, or the Cattle Rite of Cooley, which is one of the best known medieval Irish tales, and this is what I based my rendition off of. So, let me relate some of those passages to you. Now, the first time we see Cuchulain's Warp Spasm in the Time Bakulanya is this. Thereupon he became distorted. His hair stood on end so that it seemed as if each separate hair on his head had been hammered into it. You would have thought that there was a spark of fire on each single hair. He closed one eye so that it was no wider than the eye of a needle. He opened the other until it was as large as the mouth of a meat goblet. He laid bare from his jaw to his ear and opened his mouth rib wide so that his internal organs were visible. The champion's light rose above his head. Later on in the story he goes into the warp spasm again and this time it looks a little bit different and it goes something like this. For it was usual with him that when his hero's flame sprang forth, his feet would turn to the back and his hams turn to the front, and the round muscles of his calves would come to his shins, while one eye sank into his head and the other protruded. A man's head would go into his mouth. Every hair on him would be as sharp as a spike of hawthorn, and there would be a drop of blood on every hair. He would recognize neither comrades nor friends. He would attack alike before him and behind him. Hence the man of Connacht named Cuchulain, the distorted one. And then there is one more passage, which is the most elaborate one, and it goes... Then a great distortion came upon Cuchulain, so that he became horrible, many-shaped, strange and unrecognizable. All the flesh of his body quivered like a tree in a current, or like a bulrush in a stream. Every limb and every joint, every end and every member of him from head to foot. He performed a wild feat of contortion with his body inside his skin. His feet and his shins and his knees came to the back. His heels and his calves and his hams came to the front. The sinews of his calves came to the front of his shins and each huge round knot of them was as big as a warrior's fist. The sinews of his head were stretched to the nape of his neck and every huge, immeasurable, vast, incalculable round ball of them was as big as the head of a month-old child. Then his face became a red hollow. He sucked one of his eyes into his head so deep that a wild crane could hardly have reached it to pluck it out from the back of his skull onto his cheek. The other eye sprang out onto his cheek. His mouth was twisted back fearsomely. He drew back his cheek from his jawbone until his inward parts were visible. His lungs and his liver fluttered in his mouth and his throat. His upper palate clashed against the lower in a mighty pincer-like movement, and every stream of fiery flakes which came into his mouth from his throat was at as wide as a ram's skin. The loud beating of his heart against his ribs was heard like the baying of a bloodhound, or like a lion attacking bears. The torches of the war goddess, violent rain clouds and sparks of blazing fire were seen in the air over his head with the seething of fierce rage that rose in him. His hair curled about his head like branches of red hawthorn used to refence a gap in a hedge. If a noble apple tree weighed down with fruit, had been shaking about his hair, scarcely one apple would have reached the ground through it, but an apple would have stayed impaled on each separate hair because of the fierce bristling of his hair above his head. The hero's light rose from his forehead, as long and as thick as a hero's fist, and it was as long as his nose, and he was filled with rage as he wielded the shields and urged on the charioteer and cast sling stones at the host. As high, as thick, as strong, as powerful and as long as the mast of a great ship 
was the straight stream of dark blood which rose up from the very top of his head and dissolved into a dark magical mist like the smoke of a palace when a king comes to be waited on in the evening of a winter's day. Now, of course, I can only aspire to approach something as impressive as Cuchulain's Warp Spasm, but I'm going to try my best using some makeup. So as you could see in the video, I started by outlining my general shapes, so the large mouth and the large eye, with white uh, eyeliner pencil, and then I started filling everything in with the appropriate colors. All I used was white face paint and then just regular eyeshadow colors, so just stuff that I already had in my stash. And I always start by applying the basic colors first and then adding in some darker and some lighter shades here and there to give the drawing a little bit of dimension and make it look more 3D. So right now I'm working on the eye and I'm just adding some highlights in there to make it look, you know, like it comes to life, I'd say. Again, it's all about the shading, making it look realistic by applying darker and lighter colors in the right places. So I'm just shading underneath the eye to make it kind of blend in with the rest of my face. So now I'm drawing on a new eyebrow above my new large eye. And I'm also going to use this opportunity to make my other eyebrow a little bit more thick and manly. So now just a couple of frown lines to make me look very angry. <laughs> and then it's time to move on to the hair. So I decided to just back home, back home like there's no tomorrow. And then I needed something to help me make my hair stand up pretty much straight to the top. So I took a plastic mushroom. Um, this is just an awesome decoration that I had lying around, but you can use anything that's high and light so that it will stay on your head. So I just draped my hair around it and tied it off at the top with a hair elastic. And I was actually surprised by how well this works. As a finishing touch, I applied a white contact in my other eye to kind of white out my iris and make it look as if my eye is just this tiny little needle head. And that is the Cuchulain Warp Spasm look done. So I want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Halloween tutorials and I will see you very soon.